prepared for the worst in the Christchurch by-election on Thursday. If history is anything to go by, a Liberal Democrat victory will be discounted as an irritation to be rectified at the next general election. But for a government with a majority of 18, the loss of another seat cannot be easily dismissed. Michael Crick has watched the final days of the campaign as the beleaguered Conservative candidate was left abandoned by the Cabinet big hitters. <laughs> this time a week ago, the Tories were acting as if they still had a chance here. The parliamentary whips, even willing to endanger valuable Commons votes by sending down a coachload of MPs to fight off the Liberal Democrat challenge. Some Conservatives even spoke of victory. Oh yes, we'll, we'll win. The question is, by how much? And if you ask me that question, I shall give you the, the typical politician's answer. Good gracious, is that the time I must go? So I don't know what the majority is going to be, but no, we're not in the business of losing this one. But MPs apparently return from their encounters on Christchurch doorsteps, convinced this seat is lost. The Tory mood this week seems to be get it all over as quickly as possible, exemplified by this walkabout by the Tory candidate. The man once so willing to engage doubtful voters in lengthy discussions scuttled through the marketplace, barely talking to anyone. When he did meet people, politics was hardly mentioned. Good morning. Thank you very much. An occasion scheduled to last 50 minutes took just 20. But nothing showed the sorry state of the Tory campaign more than when the candidate and the leader of the House, Tony Newton, faced a string of questions on John Major's famous unguarded comments. Is, is it true that, that your motto, as you sort of get in, stuck into the last week of campaigning, will be... Um, don't let the bastards get you down. <laughs> <laughs> but I have had a full range of people from across the political spectrum within the Conservative Party. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the debates over Maastricht are now complete. You say you've had um, a range of people from right across the party to support you. Does that mean you've had some bastards here supporting you? <laughs> <laughs> I repeat my comment. I've had a range of people across the whole spectrum of the political party. Um, Rob, Edward Heath is, is not a bastard in any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Later, candidates' minds weren't so much on whether John Major's authority could ever be restored, but the restoration of the local Highcliffe Castle. In one of those odd events only by-elections throw up, each candidate visited year, an exhibition on how to save the building. But they seemed strangely reluctant to meet each other. So Rob Hayward waited patiently outside until Diana Maddock had left. The original Highcliffe Castle was built by the Tory Prime Minister, Lord Bute. Unusually for an 18th century politician, Lord Bute isn't thought to have had any bastards. But he did father an unpopular tax on cider and earned a reputation as the most hated man in England. How do you think Lord Bute compared to John Major as Prime Minister? I don't know a lot about Lord Bute. I know well, much more about John Major. John it says here he was the most hated man in England and that he had a, a team of rebellious and um, incompetent ministers. Did he? Well, that doesn't sound like John Major at all, then. Not because, at all? No, I mean, John Major is an extremely competent minister, and he has an extremely competent team who have pulled behind him on very difficult issues, as you've seen just recently. You don't see any parallels between these two? None whatsoever, no. no. <laughs> An hour later, it was Labour's turn to consider the ruins of Highcliffe Castle, before turning to more pressing preservation work on the Christchurch Labour vote. Even in the constituency's strongest Labour area, Liberal Democrat posters warded off the party's own troop of MPs, including some of their star attractions. I know, because as you saw what happened after Newbury when they mm. lost, I mean, really their policy stayed exactly the same, yeah. because they expected the Lib Dems to win. Mm. And in a sense, I think they're expecting them to win this time. But if we yeah. won, that really would. So well, I'll leave you that. We've got the rest of the week, and I'll it. think about it. You can't do fairer than that. Thanks I very much indeed. That's that you. All I can say. OK. Me. So what do you think about Privately, it? Labour hopes a Liberal Democrat victory now looks so certain that their supporters won't desert tactically to the centre party in quite the same humiliating numbers that they did in Newbury three months ago. Of course, we start from a much higher level here. Much bigger share of the vote than in Newbury. Much stronger organisation uh, here. And I think you'll find many of the Tories pouring over to the Liberal uh, Democrats and most of the Labour people sticking with Labour. The meeting will be addressed by Paddy Ashdown MP and...
but it will be difficult for Labour to save its deposit against a Liberal Democrat surge which saw more than 800 people pack a meeting last night to hear Paddy Ashdown and that veteran by-election campaigner Roy Jenkins. The Tories, meanwhile, had less than a third of that figure for another old European war horse, Sir Edward Heath, who showed John Major isn't the only Tory leader capable of gaffes. Sir Edward is one of the few Conservative MPs to support the social chapter, but when asked an embarrassing question about it, he too appeared to forget the dangers of microphones. Social yes, why do we have, why don't we want it when the other countries want it? I think you probably are to answer because I, I want it. <laughs> this morning, Rob Hayward produced a letter of support from another former leader, Lady Thatcher. Party officials say a similar letter is coming from John Major, though it does seem rather late. Paddy Ashdown, meanwhile, delivered a blistering attack on the Prime Minister. Mr Major appears to have made appeasement into an art form, both internally and externally. He uh, complains about his own cabinet colleagues when he thinks no one is listening, but he promised to listen to them when he's shaping the, same, the, the, the policy for the next election. This is no way to lead a party, and it is no way to lead a country. And Labour's deputy leader, Margaret Beckett, insisted the Tories had to replace Mr Major even if that might not help Labour win the next election. You're suggesting to me that because it might be in the interests of the Labour Party, I should want Britain to keep a Prime Minister who is weak, who is incompetent, who is simply not up to the job. It might be in the interests of the Labour Party, but it is not in the interests of Britain. And I repeat, the sooner he goes, the better. When Rob Hayward visited a garden centre today, he looked like a man who knew he was beaten. But most of those thinking of deserting his party would have told him that John Major isn't the fundamental problem. Do you think it would make any difference if they were to Conservatives got rid of John Major? I don't think so. I think it's the Conservative government. I think they've gone totally down the wrong path. It's policies as much as John Major. I mean, uh, I'm not particularly enthralled with him. Uh, I think he's very weak. But um, unless they change their policies, and that's why we are voting Liberal Democrat this time, I don't think John Major is strong. At least he doesn't appear strong to me. So you um, think that Mrs Thatcher was a better leader than John Major? I think so. I like John Major. So you think he's good? It's just yes. it's other things that you're worried yes. about? This by-election won't be decided either on the competence of the Prime Minister or of the main contenders. The Liberal Democrat, Diana Maddock, rarely puts a foot wrong, but rarely says anything interesting either. Feelings are so strong here, though, that her personal shortcomings are almost irrelevant. The Liberal Democrats face a Conservative majority in this seat of more than 23,000. Never before in any by-election or at a general election have any of the centre parties overcome a majority of that size. But the question is now not whether Diana Maddock is going to win this seat, but how big her majority will be and how damaging the swing against the government. Tomorrow, the Tory chairman, Sir Norman Fowler, descends on Christchurch to round off the Conservative campaign and to begin three days of some considerable explaining. He'll find, though, that the mood in Christchurch is such that it's doubtful his party could win any seat in the country at the moment. Michael Crick, and there are 14 candidates standing in the Christchurch by-election. Voting takes place on Thursday. The seat was held by the Conservative MP Robert Adley, who died in May with a majority of 23,000.